I'm Victor Salve. I'm an outbound product manager, and I work on securely delivering applications in Google Cloud. Today, I'm going to be walking through an end-to-end -end development workflow uh, with security capabilities provided by Google Cloud with the ultimate goal of strengthening your software supply chain security. So let's get started and take a look at the flow. We're going to be going through a relatively typical development workflow, which includes a developer checking in or doing a PR to a Git repository, which will then trigger a CI process. Um, this builds a containerized application, which pushes the image to Artifact Registry. So Artifact Registry will actually use container analysis to automatically scan for uh, vulnerabilities in my image. And I've configured my cloud build process with a policy check step. So this is based on open source Critis. And what it will do is ensure that my image meets the requirements that have been set out before advancing to the next step. And if not, my build will fail. Finally, we'll use Cloud Deploy to progress our image uh, into GKE environments in a controlled fashion. Um, you can include things like manual approval steps at key junctures with Cloud Deploy. But I've also enabled binary authorization on this project to ensure that any deployed image uh, to GKE or Cloud Run meets policy requirements. Uh, we'll talk about the specific policies I've set out for this project in a moment. So let's talk about the application itself. Now, my application is a simple Python Flask based application, um, and I've containerized it with Docker. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to use Cloud Build uh, to actually build and push this application, at which point Artifact Registry will use container analysis to automatically scan my images for vulnerabilities. Now, if those vulnerabilities exceed my policy requirements, my build will fail. So I'm going to be doing that based on uh, a policy that I've set out in this particular file. So in this particular case, anything that exceeds a medium severity, it will basically fail my build. Let's see an example where I build a known vulnerable image before we go and actually look at my application. And let's see how this works in a failure mode. So I've got a build file here that's going to be pulling uh, from my bad Docker file. Okay, and my bad Docker file um, has, uh, you know, an old Debian 9 image, um, which has some vulnerabilities in it. So let's take a look at how that actually works. And I'm going to go ahead and kick off the build. So I can see that I've already got my build started here. And we can actually take a look at the progress as it goes through all of the steps. OK, so you can see that my build actually failed on, on this vuln sign step. And this particular step, what it does, as I mentioned earlier, it's a policy check. So it checks to make sure that that policy file that I mentioned earlier, um, that the thresholds in it have not been exceeded. And in this case, uh, you can see that my medium medium policy requirement was in place. And we found actually nine violations within this image, which is why it failed. So let's take a look at this in artifact analysis. You can see that just a minute ago, we have an image built uh, with a lot of vulnerabilities, including 12 high vulnerabilities. But I also mentioned another layer of policy, policy enforcement with binary authorization. So in this case, I have a relatively simple policy, which I'm going to share. In my binary authorization policy file, I have two requirements that any image must have in order to be deployed to my environments. So the first is that the image must be built by Cloud Build. So it has to be signed by the Cloud Build system to note that we've used Cloud Build to build this particular image. And second, it has to pass my vulnerability policy thresholds, which we just walked through. Now, before we deploy our application, uh, let's again take a look at an example where we try to deploy something that does not conform to policy. So in this case, I'm going to be attempting to deploy a Nginx uh, image. 
um, and this particular image uh, has not, of course, gone through the various scrutiny that's required. Um, and we're going to go ahead and try to deploy that and see how that works. All right. So now I can see that I'm waiting for this thing to roll out, but you notice that it has not actually rolled out. And when I go into my workloads view within Kubernetes engine and I refresh, I see that I actually have here an error message that's letting me know that uh, this particular image was rejected by binary authorization. Now, it also specifies that it had no uh, attestations, which are assurances that this particular image was built by cloud build, nor did it go through my vulnerability checks. So in a nutshell, uh, binary authorization provided admission control right before it went into production. So, but now let's take a look at our application. Let's take a look at the cloud build steps that are going to take place here um, within our CI process, within our build process. Um, we're first going to build the Docker image or the container image. We're then going to run some API tests. We're then going to go ahead and push to artifact registry. So build, run tests, push. Okay. Um, at that point, we're also going to be doing a vulnerability analysis, right? Just like we did in the last example where it failed. And finally, it's going to kick off a deployment if that vulnerability scan passes via Cloud Deploy. And Cloud Deploy is going to progress it into the first test environment. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is that I'm also running this build within what's called a private pool. For added security, we've configured our Cloud Build job to run in a private pool, which provides the ability to peer into private networks. Um, it allows things like... Uh, uh, eliminating public internet egress if you choose. You can run in a specific region. Uh, you can also utilize a variety of machine type configurations. Um, so you can really kind of tailor and customize your build environment. I'm going to be triggering our application via a commit. We'll commit it and now we'll push. Okay, so the build has finished in just a couple of minutes and we can see that everything is passed. Now, I'm going to point out that vulnerability scanning uh, requirement, and you can see that in this case, um, the same policy applied, the medium-medium policy. We can also see that uh, uh, we were able to pass that requirement. So we were able to attain the attestation, which is required in binary authorization. Later, it's also required to pass this particular build step and see that uh, on the vulnerability side, there's only three mediums and zero highs. So we've actually passed this particular check. Now, the other thing I can do here, and Nikhil talked about Salsa Level 2 compliance, I can inspect the provenance of this particular artifact. So Salsa Level 2 compliance hinges on signed provenance of built artifacts. Cloud Build automatically generates and stores signed provenance for artifacts, which we can inspect at any time. Let's take a look at the artifact provenance for this particular image that was just built. And we can see here that the provenance is stored in an in toto format. We can see, uh, you know, the commit that triggered this particular build. Um, we can see a lot of information, including all of the steps that were actually run. And you can see at the end that it also has been signed by Cloud Build. Okay, so we can also now take a look at Cloud Deploy, which likely has started rolling out our application at this point. Um, and in fact, you can see that this was actually just rolled out. Um, and if we go back to our workload screen and refresh it, you'll see that the pop stats workload, the application that we just deployed, was deployed OK, in contrast to the Nginx we tried to deploy earlier. So I hope this demonstration provided a useful view into how Google Cloud's CICD, artifact management, and policy enforcement measures can be used together to help secure your software supply chain. Thanks.